This video is sponsored by ReCut. Get $10 off your purchase by going to getrecut.com slash it. How would you like to finish more videos, publish more content, and make more money with your skills as a video editor or content creator? If that sounds good, you need to stop wasting so much time in your editing process. And as you guessed, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can do that. In this video, we're gonna go over a handful of super simple tools, concepts, and methods that you should have in your back pocket to speed up your edits crush your projects faster, and have more time for naps. I mean, to edit more videos. So, secure the cup, and let's get editing. First things first, you're gonna see me using DaVinci Resolve in this video because that's the editing software that I like to use, but most, if not all of the concepts that we're going to talk about should work in any major editing software. You may just need to figure out what it's called and where to find it in whatever software you're using, and likely it'll be similar to what it is in DaVinci Resolve. And if you have things to add, more tips to share, or something that you think might be helpful to someone else, leave it down in the comments below. So let's kick things off with one of the most important parts of editing culling through your footage and getting just the parts that you want into your timeline. There are two main ways that I like to do this, and I think it can be really beneficial to have a good handle on both of them. The first method is setting your in and out points on clips in your media bin before even adding them to the timeline. Generally, once you've imported all your clips into your media bin, you can double click on any clip to preview it, then you can play or scrub through that clip and hit I to set an in point and O to set an out point. Now, when you drag that clip onto your timeline, it will only be the part of the clip between the in and out points that you set. Bonus points if you learn the keyboard shortcuts to drop the currently selected clip onto the end of the timeline or above all the other clips for B-roll. Theoretically, you could go through all the clips in your media bin, set your in and out points and drag it all onto the timeline and have basically a rough cut or what some people like to call a selects timeline, ready to be rearranged and organized into a beautiful piece of art. The second way to achieve the selects timeline is to highlight all the clips that you want in your media bin, drag them into your timeline all at once without any in and out points created, then you're going to go to each clip on the timeline, cut at the parts where you want the clips to start and end, similar to making in and out points, delete the excess, and you'll end up with the same kind of selects timeline. So why do I think it's important to be comfortable with both of these methods? Because I personally find that they work best in different situations. I find that the in and out point method works best if I have very specific b-roll shots planned for very specific parts of a video. For example, if I'm doing a product review and I want to find that specific feature that I'm talking about, and then place it on top of my timeline, I'll use the in and out point method. However, if I have something like a travel video, one of my hiking scenes, or even just a video with several different talking sections, I prefer to dump everything on the timeline and cut things up from there. This way is a bit more visually easy to keep track of and can be really quick, especially if you use some of the other tips that we're gonna talk about later in this video. The next tip is a huge one for anyone who does any kind of video that includes talking and it's to edit using the audio waveform. Chances are, if you've got a talking clip that you need to edit, the visuals of that clip won't do you much good unless you can read lips while you're scrubbing through the footage. However, if you go to your timeline, make sure that the audio portion of your clip is visible by stretching it out and enabling anything that needs to be enabled. For example, in DaVinci Resolve, it's under timeline view options and audio waveforms. And now we can see exactly where our subject started and stopped talking. But what makes this even better is that after a while, you actually get used to kind of of reading the audio waveform and you know what you're looking for. So when we see all those little lumps in the waveform, those are generally the syllables or words as the subject is talking, and we usually want to cut between them. And beyond getting used to knowing all the shapes, you can look for patterns. For me, this is really useful when I'm trying to say a line several times in a row, but I keep screwing up. If I see the same starting shape over and over with a little gap, I can usually tell that I'm trying the same line over and over and then find the last one, which is usually when I decided it was good enough. What is up, people? What is up, people? What is up, people? And I want to tell you, what is up, people? Done. But keeping your audio waveforms open and in mind can be helpful beyond just the talking parts, too. For example, if you have something like a clip where a door closes and there's lots of pre and post roll on that clip, you can probably see that sound in the waveform instead of searching for the visual. And you can even see the audio waveform in your clip viewer when setting in and out points by choosing Show Full Clip Audio Waveform in DaVinci Resolve. 
Now, while we're on the topic of using audio waveforms for editing, I wanna tell you about a program that I use called ReCut that's not only the sponsor of this video, but also happens to be another awesome way for you to speed up your editing. The main function of ReCut is to take your video clips, analyze the audio waveform that we were just talking about, and remove all the silent sections for you automatically instead of you having to go in and do it all manually yourself. So if you're someone like me who has a lot of long talking clips, or maybe you do live streams and you wanna cut them down into quicker content, ReCut saves so much time. All you do is drop in a video file, set your desired threshold, minimum duration, and padding for that clip, or just hit auto and watch it work. You can watch through and make sure that it did what you were looking for and even change the settings in real time without having to reprocess. Once ReCut has created its selections, you can go in and override them if you want, or you can use what it has and delete any of the takes that you don't need out of your talking portion. I generally do my whole first pass at my talking head clips in this exact way. Once you're done and you know that it's right, you can export the finished product either as a new video file or as a timeline file to have it losslessly make the cuts in your editor of choice. This is my preferred export method so that I can touch things up later in my editor if I need to. You can try ReCut for free and get $10 off of your purchase by going to getrecut.com slash it, and I'll leave a link down in the description so you can check it out after this video. Huge thanks to ReCut for sponsoring this video. The next thing that will speed up your editing immensely is understanding the use of ripple functions. The most simple of these is ripple delete. Normally, if we delete a clip from our timeline, it leaves a gap where that clip was. But if you use ripple delete, which I mapped to a custom keyboard shortcut of X, it will delete that clip and move everything earlier to fill the space. Quick aside, if you don't know how to find and customize your keyboard shortcuts in most software, it's up somewhere near your preferences menu, and you can search for any functions that you want and give them a custom key if they don't already have one. But beyond just ripple deleting, you can also ripple trim clips too. So rather than having to make a cut where you want the clip to start and then ripple delete the excess, you can do it all in one click by placing your cursor and hitting the ripple trim shortcut to do it all. Then the same process can be done to trim off the excess footage at the end of the clip too. When you use the method that we talked about earlier where you're dumping all the footage onto a timeline and cutting it down from there, this is a huge time saver. Beyond the keyboard shortcuts, you can also ripple trim using your mouse too by going into the trim edit mode in DaVinci Resolve. When you're in the trim edit mode and you trim the clip from the start or end, it will automatically ripple the rest of the clips. And if you want to extend the start or end of the clip in this way, it'll also move everything to accommodate for the new space that's needed, whereas in select mode, it would overwrite everything. I find that especially in my first rough cut of any project, I'm using the ripple functions 95% of the time. It starts to get more complicated once you've got multiple tracks and a lot going on, but this is a very useful tool to understand. The next tip generally happens after you have your selects made, and that is to use stacked timelines. Stack timelines are when your program gives you the ability to visually put two different timelines on top of one another. We can have our main timeline on the bottom and we can have our selects timeline on the top and then we can start to grab and drag clips down into the main timeline to start piecing together the actual edit. To get to this view in DaVinci Resolve, you click the timeline view options, enable stacked timelines, and then this will open up the ability to have timelines in tabs, but also if you click the plus button on the right, it'll create a stacked view. Now, on the drop down menu of each tab, you can select which timeline you want to see and start creating your stacked edit. Earlier, I mentioned that when I'm editing long talking clips, I often try to find the last take of any given line because that's usually where I decided I had nailed it and it was time to move on. One thing that you can try to do to speed up this process is to edit your talking bits from the end backwards towards the start. Basically, you should run into the best take right away and you can get rid of all the previous attempts, which should save you having to check every single one individually. Now, this next tip is going to upset some of you, I'm sure. It's one of those things that comes easy to some people and so difficult for others. Label, color code, tag, and generally just organize your footage before you ever start editing. 
I know this isn't as exciting as some big fancy hack that will increase your editing speed, but if you're dealing with a big project with a lot of different clips, doing this kind of organization first can save you a lot of time in digging around later. This could be something as simple as creating a folder structure to separate different types of footage or different scenes. You can color code your footage so that when you do drag it into the timeline, it's obvious what kind of footage is what at a glance. You can even go through and rename your clips in your editor so that when you go back to look for the one specific clip, it'll be easy to find instead of looking for C underscore 00128.mp4 or whatever your camera called it. And beyond that, if you can get an organization method that works really well across multiple projects and copy that, you can get even faster at that process and save extra time. But as always, I wanna hear from you. Do you have any tips for people who want to speed up their video editing and have more time to slowly sip their coffee and ponder how weird clouds are? Drop a comment down below and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Make sure to check out the link in the description for recut and I will see you next time. Boom, done, did it. Dunder did it, Dunder Mifflin.